Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. As the calendar turns to October, apple season is in full swing. And so our focus today is on apple recipes. To get started, we join Across the Fence's Marco Aiella in his kitchen, where he's learning which apples are best for cooking. Hi, I'm Marco Aiella, and I'm here to share another recipe with all of you. Fall is full on. Temperatures are dropping. It's beautiful outside and of course it's time to go pick some apples which is one of my favorite activities and I get my apples from Hackett's Orchard in South Hero which is just up the street from where I live and I don't know about you but sometimes I have the question of what apple is best for cooking and baking so I had to ask Ron Hackett who is an expert what his opinion is on the matter that is a talk question to answer because everyone has different feelings in their mind. As, as far as cooking, of course, there's the old Rhode Island greening, which was a, a, an old time cooking apple that a lot of people like. A lot of people for pies like a Northern Spy. Eating and cooking, you come back to a Macintosh. At this time of the year, that can be used either for eating or cooking. A lot of people like Macs in a pie, even though they do mush up a bit more than say a green inn or a northern spy would. Usually, the people that come in looking for cooking apples have an idea in their head what they want. Many, a Cortland, like the apple behind me here, uh, a lot of people want that for a pie or for applesauce. So usually they'll request, we have some 40 different varieties so they'll have something in their mind that we have that they, they want. Thank you, Ron. And keeping that in mind, the process to decide what recipe to make today was pretty much the season. And summer is just ending. We still have some vegetables in our gardens, if you garden, and there's plenty of vegetables left in um, all the farm stands around the state. So I decided that it will be nice to have a recipe that combines a little bit of summer, but also a little bit of fall. So how I that's how I decided to make a chicken cranberry salad, because you can get to use all of your vegetables and some of the apples that you're picking. And let me tell you, look at this salad. It is so good. And I know that I always say that it's very easy to make, but this one is really, really easy to make. So let me tell you how to start. You're gonna chop two chicken breasts into bite-sized pieces, and you're gonna season them with salt, pepper, and a little bit of chili powder or pepper flakes. It's not gonna make it spicy, but it's gonna give it a little distinctive taste that really goes well with this salad. Next, you're gonna pour two tablespoons olive oil onto a skillet and place it over medium heat. You're gonna add the chicken breast to the hot skillet and then cook them for about six minutes or until slightly browned. Once the chicken is cooked, you're gonna remove it from the heat and then you're gonna add one quarter cup of almonds to a non-greased skillet and you're gonna to toast them until they're slightly brown and aromatic. You are going to finely chop about half a red onion. And for this recipe, I decided to use three apples, one Granny Smith and two Cortlands because it's good to combine two different kinds of apples to give the recipe more complexity. You're gonna chop them into bite-sized pieces and look how pretty they look together. Once your apples are chopped, it's time to make the dressing. And you're gonna combine half a cup mayo, two tablespoons lemon or lime juice, curry powder to taste, salt and pepper. And you're gonna stir this mixture until it's very well combined. Now you're gonna start combining all of your ingredients into a bowl. And I like using a clear bowl because then you can see all of the ingredients and they look really nice. So you want to add the chicken, apples, red onion, almonds, half a cup dried cranberries, and then you're gonna pour the dressing and mix it well. Now, to finish the salad, you want to add one cup celery. And why do we wait until the end to add the celery? Well because you want the celery to be nice and crunchy for your salad, because if you add it too early, it might become a little soggy. Once all the ingredients in your salad are very well combined, you want to place on a cookie sheet 
A few slices of French bread, which you're gonna broil, making sure to turn them halfway so they toast evenly. And for ideas on how to serve your salad, I have two options. The first one is to serve it over a bed of greens, so you can use some of the greens from your garden or your favorite farm stand, or over the French bread that we just toasted. And if you notice, I have a, I lined it with lettuce at the bottom because that is going to prevent the bread from getting soggy. And just take a look at how good this looks. This is the perfect meal for a fall day or a late summer meal. And as always, make sure to follow Across the Fence on social media. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get all of our content delivered right to your phone or inbox. And make sure to go apple picking, support your local orchard, support your local farm stand, and like I always say, from my kitchen to yours, happy cooking. Thank you, Marco. And for more apple recipes, we'll head back to South Hero and Hackett's Family Orchard, where Deb Plumley has some of her favorites to share. Cooking with apples is my favorite across the fence segment. And I have some favorites to share with you all today. Let's start your day off right with some apple cider pancakes. You take your basic pancake batter and you add to it some cinnamon, some apple cider, and some buttermilk as the liquid. It's really important when you make pancakes that when you whisk the dry ingredients into the wet, you don't over mix. You just want to incorporate until the batter is blended. So then you cook your pancakes on a griddle, turning them, serve them toasty warm. You can drizzle on some maple syrup or try this recipe, and we'll just spoon some out here for apple chunks that are sauteed in cider, butter, a little bit of brown sugar, and cinnamon. Doesn't that look like a great way to start your day? So moving on, I do a lot of searching on the web, and one of my favorite websites is King Arthur Flour. And this apple nut bread pudding is from their website, and it's a lovely and comforting dessert. You take your cubes of stale bread, mix in cream. This uses actually a boiled cider concentrate to give you a burst of apple flavor. If you don't have that, you can use apple juice concentrate. You're going to fold in your diced apples, dried raisins. I use dried cranberries. In this case, cream, eggs, the usual ingredients, and you're gonna bake this for about 25 to 30 minutes. You wanna bake it until all the liquid has cooked in and the pudding is set. And you can serve this warm, or if you would like, make it ahead of time and just reheat it. It's wonderful as is, or you could certainly add some more maple syrup to it, or perhaps some whipped cream. Now the last recipe I have to share comes from a viewer, Robert Corliss of Rutland, Vermont and these are maple apple streusel muffins. And they have all the great flavors of Vermont with maple syrup and apples. So the base for the muffin is hearty. It has a cup of maple syrup, it's got a generous amount of oatmeal, and of course your diced apples, some cinnamon. When you put that in the muffin cups, then you're going to top it with a streusel, which is brown sugar, butter, oatmeal, some cinnamon, when these are baking, your kitchen is gonna smell wonderful. Now, Robert says that these are great any time of year. I think they'd be good for breakfast, they'd be good for an afternoon snack. I have to say it made 19, and if you count them, you can see that we ate some of them at home. So these are a wonderful muffin, and I wanna thank Robert for sharing them with us today. Now those are the recipes I have to share. I hope our viewers take advantage of this wonderful fall we've had to get out and visit your local orchard, go to your farm stand, try some of the wonderful apples that are available this season. And now, back to the studio. Thanks, Deb. If you're heading to the orchard, UVM apple expert Terry Bradshaw has this advice. Apple picking is an important pastime in Vermont. A lot of families like to enjoy getting out in the orchards uh, and enjoying uh, not just getting food, but also just having a great time in the outdoors. 
it's really important to know that you're not just ripping fruit off the tree. There is a, a, a very simple process to picking apples, but it's an important one to ensure that you don't damage both the apple you're picking and next year's crop. So the first thing to do is to make sure that you're picking the ripe fruit that you're looking for. Sometimes you'll get fruit maybe that are in the shade or a little bit behind the one you're looking for that uh, isn't the one that you want. So make sure to look over the fruit without twisting it a bunch and knocking it off and get the fruit that you, that you want. And then when you do select it, you grab it gently, not too hard so you're not bruising it with your fingers, and you give it a gentle roll. You grab it gently, not too hard so you're not bruising it with your fingers, and you give it a gentle roll right off. And that way you get the apple, you get its stem, and you leave next year's apple, which is uh, this bud, which is next year's apple, on. If you just pull the fruit off, you're probably gonna rip off that bud and you'll probably also drop off the fruit next to it. Now, if you knock off the fruit that's next to it, that's a perfectly fine fruit. If it's a few days behind this one, uh, it's still valuable and it's useful and it's worth you picking it up to bring it home because once it sits on the ground, it's really not of any value to the grower. And there's a lot of fruit and value lost when apples are on the ground. We don't recommend just picking apples that have been lying on the ground for food safety reasons, but if you just drop one on the ground, two second rule, you can pick it up uh, and certainly growers will really appreciate you keeping the orchard clean and, the, and efficiently harvested. Our thanks to Terry. And once again, thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.